We've been following former Royal Marines Commando Penn Farthing, who runs an animal shelter in Kabul and vowed not to leave Afghanistan unless his staff and their families can go with him. Tensions were high on Friday when the Taliban turned up to his house moments before he joined us on the show. My heart's still going, that's for sure. Um, they turned up just now. Um, we have a security camera outside. You know, we've always had one. Um, where we could watch on the security monitor, and they gathered. There was probably about 10, 15 of them, a couple of cars. They were on walkie-talkies. Uh, so we've, we've made our a procedure for when they come in. We had that ready. Um, but thankfully, um, just as we thought they were going to come in, they all went into a frenzy of activity you know, on their walkie-talkies, jumped in their cars and sped off. So it was a close call for Penn. And Penn's wife, Kaiser Marcus, managed, though, to escape Kabul airport, uh, to the airport, sorry, in the early hours of last Thursday. She's now la landed safely in Oslo on what was astonishingly a near-empty flight. Mm. Uh, she's concerned now that time is running out for her husband to leave. And we're really pleased to say that Kaiser joins us now from Oslo, alongside Penn, who joins us again from Kabul. Yes, hello, um, hello, hello. Kaiser, so nice to, uh, to, to meet you. Uh, we've, always, nice. we've heard so much about you um, and we've been following your story closely on, on this programme and, and Penn spoke so powerfully to us on Friday. Just, just Kaiser, tell us, just tell us a bit about how you are. Well, I'm I'm good, but I'm um, my my I'm so happy that I'm physically here in uh, in Norway. I'm safe. I got uh, an amazing uh, people who's been working for me. But my head is still in Kabul. My friends are still there. Um, Pen is still there. Uh, the the girls that I work for in Ascend Athletics, they're still stuck there. So. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. We we spoke to one on Friday who who managed to get on a plane. Uh, and, and got out, and I was saying to her, what, what, how did you feel when you got on the plane? I guess naively expecting her to say, I felt excitement and I felt happy, and she said, no, no, I, I, I felt overwhelming sadness for the, for the people I've, I've left behind. So, uh, I, I, Kaiser, I guess you have a, you're experiencing a, a similar emotion. That's, that's correct. It's every, everything is left. This is not the way I wanted to, to leave the country that I lived for two years and have my friends and family in. But I'm very thankful that I'm in safety and I realise now that I can be assisting them from afar. And Kaiser, we've, uh, we were hearing some, from a British citizen who has family members in Afghanistan with British papers who are being, you know, beaten back essentially from the airport several, several times. Can you just give us a sense of what that journey was like for you? Because I believe it was like an undercover operation essentially to get you there safely and that there were people handing you their babies to try and get their children to safety. I mean, the trauma of just going through that process to get to safety uh, sounds kind of extraordinary. Well, well, I was told by, by my government that I had to, to come to the airport just like every other um, person who has a reason to come into the airport who has a flight. Uh, but there is no, they say that they can't guarantee the safe passage into the airport. So I had to push through a big crowd, um, just, as, just as everyone else. But the difference is that I had, um, um, I, had, I had a flight waiting for me. And there is so many people that stood out there in desperation, just trying to get onto a flight. Um, and hence that, that lady who just stood next to me, crammed into me in the crowd, asking, can you please take my baby? Can you please take my baby? Um, of course, I can't do that. I know that that is not an option. And luckily, I managed to push through and get into the airport um, because I had people looking for me on the inside. Well, that, so, terrific, Kasa, just, just to be clear on what you were saying there, yeah. that, 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 that mother was willing in, in that moment, such was her desperation. She, was, she knew that you were going to get on an aeroplane. She was willing to give you her baby just so that her baby could escape even if, if she herself didn't get out. Is that what you're saying? That, that is what, how I understood the situation as she asked, can you please bring my baby? Can you please bring my baby? My diary is not brilliant, but that's what <laughs> I understood those words. And, and I think that just reflects the desperation of the people who are now left under a Taliban regime. Kaiser, They're fearing... And, and that feeling of having to push through people, these people, you know, a nation of people who you live amongst, who you care about and yet in those moments you can't 
you can't actually be compassionate. You have to do it for yourself. And that, I think that pen for you there, um, and that's the opposite side in a way. You are, you could go to the airport, couldn't you, alone, but you're not willing to do that. Uh, and I know you took a, sorry, not to say that Kaiser went alone, but I know you took a pregnant um, a, a, a manager employee, from yeah. your from your company with you as well. So you did actually manage to get someone else out to safety who needed it. But Penn, for yeah. you, the issue is is bigger than just you and Kaisa, it seems. Yeah, I almost uh, lost it <laughs> seeing Kaisa just then. Uh, oh. There you go, Kaisa. He's missing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who, sorry, Penn, who is there that? Is. Tell, tell, tell us who that is. Uh, this is it is uh, Ewok. This is uh, Kaisa's dog. Ewok <laughs> from Star Wars. Ewok, yeah. Okay. yeah I, can see, I can see the resemblance. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah, I could go to the airport. You know, I could fight my way through. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got I'm, I'm not concerned about getting into the airport if it's just me on my own at all. Um, but I'm not leaving my staff, you know, behind my Afghan staff behind. And what Kaiser has just described there, you know, it's still happening today. So I've got. A few updates for you. Um, there's a lot going on, um, and I need the help of the British public um, once again. Um, firstly, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, has granted approval for my Afghan team and their families to come to the United Kingdom. So that's absolutely amazing news. Um, I need everybody just out there now to send some love to Boris Johnson. I don't care what political party you are, um, send him some love because he is now fully behind Operation Ark and our mission to get our staff and animals out of Afghanistan. Um, but there are thousands, thousands of people that are gonna be left here um, in desperation to this, the rule of the Taliban. And, and Prime Minister Boris Johnson um, is determined to get Joe Biden to extend this air corridor past the 31st of August. Um, obviously this G7 meeting tomorrow is incredibly important. Um, but we need to get behind Boris Johnson. We need to let the United States know that Britain is going to stay and keep getting people out of that country. There is no way Biden can just leave. Mm. Uh, how can he just leave people behind on the ground? Um, so I need everybody who's out there, whoever who's got social media, get on to Biden and tell him he must leave this air corridor open past the 31st of August. The carnage that is, we're going to see on TV when all of these desperate people realise that last flight is going to take off. We, we haven't even, we, we can't even comprehend what we're going to be watching I don't, on I TV. Mean, I, I mean, I spoke about this earlier, but Biden, who's famously empathetic as a president, doesn't seem to show much empathy for anyone apart from Americans. And I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to understand that just conceptually, why he thinks I the know, only thing that matters is Americans. What about humans? What about when you've been into a country and changed the country and bombed the country and occupied the country? You have a duty to humans. And it was only 2,500 compared to 28,500 soldiers that have been in South Korea since the Korean War preventing the North invading. It only took 2,500 to stop the Taliban taking over. It is hard to get your head around. Penn, I'm still sort of just getting over the vignette that, that Kesa painted a moment ago of the mother who was willing to give her her baby and, and see that baby leave on an aeroplane without her. That, 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 as a picture, as a moment, as a story, tells you almost everything you need to know about the desperation of these people at that airport right now. If that airport shuts on the 31st of August, Kaisa's dying to see you again. She wants to see Ewok again. In, you know, these are the pieces that make up your family. How will you get out after that date? Um, I've got to, I mean, I've got to say, you know, the British, we've got British troops on the ground, you know, in harm's way, 16 air assault are there and all their backup and support, you know, and they've been part in an absolutely horrendous position. Um, and I've had to show pictures of them going through, you know, some of that absolute heartbreak and stress because there are so many desperate people. You saw those crushes in the airport a few days ago, you know, and you've got British soldiers up there trying to get people out trying to lift them out of harm's way. They should not have been put in this position. And the only way you can get out of that is to extend this air corridor. But, um, um, how Boris are you... Johnson's obviously... Give... 
Yeah, I was just wondering, there's sort of, is it 70 members of staff you have? 71. 71, plus their families, which you say Boris Johnson has given the green light to, um, and yeah. the animals, I'm assuming, for all of you, oh, your whole yes. setup, everybody, to get on a flight over to the UK. Do you know which flight you might try and get on and how, given the crush that we've seen there, how you're going to keep the 70 families in one group? Because, of course, you know, you look like a foreigner there, but um, the Afghan families don't. And so that is a problem for them, isn't it, essentially? Yeah, um, I mean, there's a couple of things there. I need to point out to everybody, our support has been absolutely amazing. So we have actually privately chartered an aircraft into Kabul airport. Right now, I need to have an ISAF call sign. So if the MOD is listening to this, I need that ISAF call sign and I need it this morning. Um, this aircraft is not a military carrier, so you've seen those photos. Everybody gets in a military carrier, it's just a big space. Um, for us, we're bringing in a private um, A300 Airbus. It's got a cargo hold and passenger capability. 250 people. I've got 71. So we're going to fill that aircraft with as many people as we possibly can who are entitled to come to Britain who've got British passports. And if we just took off, that cargo hold would be empty. So you can't pop people in the cargo hold. So we're going to pop our animals mm. in the cargo hold. Amazing. So there's no cost to the British taxpayer. The military don't have to do anything apart from give me an ISAF pool sign, and I need it this morning. Okay. Um, otherwise, we're sitting here till the end of August and beyond. Well, I hope you get it. And we know that members of the British government watch this show, and I hope that you get what you need. But just to be clear... It's, I mean, we, you know, there was such a huge response to you, Penn, from Friday's interview, um, because you are <laughs> clearly such a good person. And even that detail is just amazing, which is you, are, you run Afghanistan's first animal sanctuary, you have injured animals and stray animals, and as well as your 71 staff and their families, you want to put all of the animals from your sanctuary on, in the cargo hold of that... I know you've just explained this, but it's still worth repeating. You want to get all of your injured and stray animals out of Afghanistan as well. Yes, absolutely. If I'm if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get into that airport, I might as well go big. How will you how will you transport them to the airport? Um, I'm only I'm only gonna say two words and then I'm I'm not gonna say any more but Taliban taxi. Okay. 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 You have your ways and means. Um and you'll be coming to the UK and of of course Kaiser's uh, you're in Norway, and so I suppose, Kaisa, from your point of view, hearing Penn talk this way, how does it make you feel? Because you know what he's going to have to do in the next 24, 48 hours and the risks that that includes. Well, I know that if it's someone who can do it, it's Penn, but he mm. needs the support from others. And the second he lands, um, he gets his plans cleared. Um, I will see if I can get on a flight and meet him uh, when he arrives in London. I know not just to meet Penn, obviously I want to see him, but it's also all the handling of the animals, all the support of the people. I have been given very good, um, how do you say, follow-up when I landed. Mm. Uh, it's hard to land after you've been stressed for so mm. long, after you've seen what you've seen and they need support um, the second they land. And I want to be there and help out with that. What a moment that will be, though, Kaiser, won't it? If, you know, if he, after everything that's happened in the last week and a half or so, that you got out and then Penn stays back to fight and protect those staff and he gets out, you're reunited with him, you're reunited with Ewok, the animals are there, the staff. What a moment that, you know, that will be. And that will drive you. Um, thank you to both of you for joining us on the programme. And, Penn, we hear your message loud and clear. You need a sign that your flight is clear uh, from yeah, the I MOD. I need that call sign and I need it this morning. And just very quickly, um, my pregnant um, country manager who left with Kaiser is stuck in a hellhole of a transit camp in Germany. They've got 14 portaloos for 9,000 people. She's an American citizen. A young child is now sick in that camp. She's 33 weeks pregnant. Hmm. Joe Biden has got to sort this out. If you go on my um, social media, you'll see the photos. Yeah. It's just another disaster. He has no clue what he's doing. Well, Do you think he... Tony Blair was right to call it imbecilic? Absolutely, 100%. 100%. This guy is, is not fit to be President of the United States okay. because he has absolutely destroyed a country, 
and it, there's no handle on what is actually happening here. Ben, thank you. Uh, we, you know, it, it's it's so it's a difficult situation, but we appreciate the fact that we you, you share your story with us, uh, and of course, thank case, you. I appreciate it too. Thank you. Uh, in case we appreciate you too as well, and we're excited for you with that moment that we just described. We hope it comes soon. Thank you. Uh, take thank care. Thank you both, and take care, and be safe. Thank um, you very much. Thank you.